Welcome to Beside the Burn for Friday the 27th of January. Uh, We've reached the end of another week. We're continuing our series through Matthew's Gospel and today we come to Matthew chapter 17. We're just going to take the first 13 verses of the chapter today because it relates to the transfiguration of Jesus. And there is so much in that little passage about the transfiguration that we want to take some time just thinking about that uh, and then we'll cover the end of the chapter at the beginning of next week. So the Transfiguration is a wonderful encounter that Jesus has with Moses and Elijah uh, as they go up onto a mountain uh, and Jesus takes with him Peter, James and John, the three disciples that he is closest to that form the inner circle, as it were, of his friendship. Those that are uh, trusted the most, those that are brought along with him the most. And Jesus uh, brings them along to witness this event. And it's an event that they struggle to understand what it's about. And, And obviously we struggle as well today. And Jesus warns them at the end that they're not to tell anyone about what has happened until he rises from the dead. So two things here. This uh, transfiguration only makes sense to us whenever we have realised that Jesus rises from the dead, that he has victory over the grave. And he is giving the, these three disciples this vital information about what is going to happen to him, how he is going to rise from the dead. And therefore, whenever he is crucified, whenever he is buried, they should have been expecting him to come back because here he is telling them in no uncertain terms very clearly what is planned. But they're struggling to comprehend the transfiguration. They ask some strange questions, make some strange statements in the middle of this. Uh, Peter wants to uh, build shelters for Moses and Elijah and Jesus. Uh, in a way to uh, commemorate what has happened, to put up a permanent memorial, as it were, to what takes place here. But uh, Jesus doesn't want that. He he wants them to to realise the significance of what is happening here, and then once he has risen from the grave, to then tell others about it, so that they too can understand. So this is worth taking a little bit of time over because here we get a brief glimpse of the true glory of Jesus. As he is transfigured, this is the glory that we're going to see of Jesus whenever we get to heaven and whenever we meet him there. So we're being given this little brief glimpse, foretaste of what Jesus is going to be like. So whenever we realize that Jesus is raised from the dead, we then have this transfiguration to help us understand the glory that shines through him, the glory of the Father that comes from him. We also link back to Jesus' baptism here because a very similar set of events happen. Instead of the dove coming down, there's a cloud that is over them. It's like the cloud in the Old Testament that would often shield God's glory from uh, the people. Whenever Moses would go up Mount Sinai, the, the cloud would descend and no one else would be able to go up the mountain and to see God and it would veil his glory. And here the cloud is doing the same th- um, thing. We also have this voice from heaven, um, which is the father speaking about his son. This is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. So again, it's Jesus' ministry on earth being confirmed by the father. And we're being told uh, what has happened and, and what's taking place. And I suppose as we think about the transfiguration and what it means for us, we have to maybe confess the sin of taking God lightly, of taking him for granted, of not realising every day that Jesus is divine, that the glory of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit emanates from him. 
And whenever we just treat Jesus as uh, just a, a, an ordinary man, as it were, we do a disservice and, and, and we don't show the full glory and the full impact that Jesus has. The promise that we get from this um, passage is that Jesus is supernatural. He's not just a man. There is much more to him. He is divine. And whenever Jesus comes into our lives, yes, as a man, he understands our situation. He has identified with us by coming to this earth. But as a divine God, he is able to do more than any man can do. We're able to come to him in prayer and he is able to answer those prayers. And therefore, that's the promise that we receive from him. I think we should see an example in this passage from the disciples and how they respond to Jesus. Whenever they witness this transfiguration and the glory emanating from Jesus, they fall down, face down on the ground, terrified at what they have seen. And that fear of the Lord, as we're told in the Old Testament, is the beginning of wisdom. And knowing that God is to be feared should colour our relationship with him. That we don't just treat him lightly and rush into his presence, but that we have a, a healthy fear of him. Yes, he's our father. He welcomes us as children. We can come to him at any time with any request, with any problem that we're facing. But also there should be this realisation that he is to be feared and respected and reverenced. And whenever we catch a little glimpse of the glory of God, we should worship him. We should glorify him. We should lift his name on high. And we're given great insight into who Jesus is here because he meets with Moses and he meets with Elijah. And here they represent the law and the prophets and the Old Testament. And Jesus is the one who is overall. So he's fulfilling the law and the prophets. He's not destroying them, but he's fulfilling all that they have said. So if we're to tell people about this passage, if we're to try and explain it to someone, we need to go to them and say, look, Jesus is not just a good man. He is divine. He is supernatural. There are things happen with Jesus that we cannot explain in our physical world because he also dwells outside that physical world as well as inside. So let's read the passage together uh, and then we'll pray. And we're going to read Matthew 17 verses 1 to 13. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James and John, the brother of James, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. Then he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun and his clothes became as white as the light. Just then there appeared before them Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, a bright cloud covered them, and a voice from the cloud said, this is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell face down to the ground, terrified. But Jesus came and touched them. Get up, he said. Don't be afraid. When they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus instructed them, don't tell anyone what you have seen until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The disciples asked him, why then do the teachers of the law say that Elijah must come first? Jesus replied, to be sure Elijah comes and will restore all things. But I tell you, Elijah has already come and they did not recognize him but have done to him everything they wished. 
In the same way, the Son of Man is going to suffer at their hands. Then the disciples understood that he was talking to them about John the Baptist. Amen. So let's pray together. Heavenly Father, to catch even just a little brief glimpse of your glory is what we desire in our lives. That we would see you, Lord, in all your glorious majesty. And that we would bow humbly face down before you in fear, Lord, of your awesome glory. Lord, help us to live our lives knowing who you are, worshipping you, Lord, for all that you have done and bringing glory to your name. Lord, we ask these things now in Jesus' name. Amen.